Hey everybody. Happy Thursday. Come on in and say hi. Let's get this party started. There we go. All right, there we go. Now I can see it. <clears throat> Hi, Jackie. Hey, Deb. Good to have everybody here tonight. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Steph. Oh, it's good to see you. Hi, Nita. Hi, Diana. Oh, lots of friends. I'm so glad. Hi, Pia. Hi, Lorraine. And Jen, Jen I laughed at your, at your note. That was funny. <laughs> oh, Maria and Nancy. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. All right, we'll give it a couple more seconds. Um, I just wanted to get things organized here on my desk, and I hope I found everything I wanted to show you. We'll see. Hi, Kim. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. All right. I'm a little crooked, but that's okay. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to start. I am absolutely in love with <laughs> making these. I told Debbie, I sent her a photo earlier and I'm like, I can't stop. It's like, I just like kept pulling paper out because I just wanted to make these over and over and over. So, um, this was not my original idea. I saw it online and I think it's so stinking cute. So before I start, I want to show you this one says I'm, sit I'm smiling under my face mask. And I know that's not a, a stamp that we have, but we do have um, a digital set that we're giving back for COVID-19 um, that it's actually a 15 page um, document and it has lots of information on the um, first two sheets. It has all the colors that coordinate with them, the, the ones that they've done because they do some in black and some in color. Um, so you have a choice and it's a digital download. So you can purchase it and download it as many times as you want. Print it on cardstock, print it on paper, however you want to use it. But the um, information here on the front is for each of the designs on here and it gives you the coordinating project or products that you can use with it like which rectangle die it would fit if it fits um, the story label punch so really really cool and when you look through here there's lots of fun um, fun <laughs> uh, graphics on here plus there's some serious ones too but like I totally share my toilet paper with you um, no saliva was used on this envelope um, <clears throat> sending love and if I could toilet paper love that um so lots of really cool sentiments in here I love the quarantini that cracked me up that's probably one of the main reasons I bought it because it's so cute <laughs> um so anyway there's lots of different sentiments in here like I said it's a 15 page document and it's $12 and all every penny $12 goes to one of two um places and you can choose which place you want to send it which is totally up to you if you don't want to purchase it that's totally fine but um yeah so when you log on to my store you can see this is there love love this i miss your face one of my favorites and sending love and paper hugs for heroes um for first responders thank you for your service for your care uh, for your sacrifice so really really cool download all right so, like I said, Stampin' Up's given $12, all of it back. We're not getting demos are just happy to be able to help out. So, I love the heart of Stampin' Up that they do love giving back. And, um, yeah, I'm very happy that we're doing something to support. <clears throat> all right. So, I'm going to show you how to make these masks tonight if you want. If you don't want. <laughs> bad I'm going to show you anyway so this one I made out of the country club paper I thought this was stinking cute with the little golf carts on it um thought it would be kind of for masculine 
masculine card. It says, I'm smiling under this face mask. And when you open it up, it says, I can't wait to social undistance with you. So I thought that was really fun. There's that one with a matching envelope. This one I love. This has that new beautiful paper from um, the Ornate Suite on here. It has the, uh, oh, weave. What's it called? Oh, can't think of it. The weave embossing folder, whatever that is. Um, and then I cut the sentiment out with a stitched oval. Just popped some flowers up on there with some leaves. And I'll tell you what I did. I pulled out a bunch of scraps of um, DSP that I had, designer paper, and I pulled out a bunch of um, baker's twine that I've had left over and in my jar. I have a jar of it here on my table. So I just was looking for colors to match and basket weave. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, oh no, that's not basket weave. That's not. Um, anyway, I pulled out lots of baker's twine to use for the little elastic that would uh, hold the masks on. So I'm going to show you how to make this. All right. As always, the measurements for the mask will be on my page. It'll be in the comments here afterwards, and it'll also be over on um, my YouTube channel. So if you haven't gone over there, you want to check it out. All right, let's see. Let's find something fun. I have a couple here. Let me do this one for right now. I'm going to do this plaid so I can do another masculine one. All right, so you'll just need some designer series paper. And the measurements for the designer series paper for one mask will be two and three fourths by two and one eighth. So two and three fourths by two and one eighth, and that's one mask. Okay. Now, once you have that, you're just going to score. And it is not difficult, so don't panic, okay? This is really simple. You're going to put it with the 2 and an eighth inch edge at the top. And I'm going to use the small end of my stylus. Now, that's because these pleats are only an eighth of an inch apart. So I don't want to use something really wide that will take up more of the paper. Um, but be sure not to push too hard when you go to score on designer paper. So I'm going to score first at a half an inch. Then I'm going to score at five eighths. Okay, so that's the first two for the first pleat. Then I'm going to move down to one and one it one and one eighth, and then one and a half and one and five eighths. Okay, I'll say them one more time for you. So it's one half, five eighths, one inch, one and an eighth, one and a half, and one and five eighths. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <clears throat> okay. So what you will do, if you can see on my paper, you can kind of see it better here on the green side. You can see the, the score lines, like I said, they're really close together. So what we're going to do, these are going to be mountain and valley folds, if you're familiar with that term. The mountain folds are the ones that are going to come up towards the top, okay? So I'm going to do that first score line up. I'm not going to do anything to that second one. I'm going to come down to that next one down here at, what was that, one inch. There it is. And I'll give that a little crease right there. So we have one, two, and I'm going to come down to this one down here, the top score line on that last, um, the third set of two. Just going to give that a little crease, okay? So when you look at it, you'll have crease, and then a score, crease, then a score, crease, and then a score, okay? Now, because they're so close together, the easiest thing to do is to turn this over to the back, and there's my fold from the first one, that top line, and then the second score line right here, I'm gonna fold up on this one. And this is gonna make it easier because it's a mountain fold on this side, but when you flip it over, you're gonna have that little valley fold in there, okay? So on the back side, I'm gonna do that second one down here, I know my hands are really big, sorry. Second one right there. And then I'll do the third one, the last little score line down here at the bottom. Like that. And I'll draw you guys a diagram too and post it. It's, it's really not hard, I promise. Once you get a visual and you play around with it, you'll see what I mean. So you can see, see how this one, the little fold goes over. There's your little Z 
you do it again, there's another little Z, you do it again, and there's another little Z. So those are your three pleats. Okay, making sense? Love it. All right, so now that I have those pretty much, um, you know, they're pretty crisp, but I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna make sure that it's pretty straight and I'm just gonna give it a really good burnish to keep those um, score lines nice and flat, like that, okay? So there we have it. So there's our three Z's again, gotcha? Cool. All right, now I'm gonna take some tear and tape <clears throat> because it is a strong adhesive, but it's also the right width that I want to use. So here we go. I'm gonna take my tear and tape, and this is the front, okay? So this is where, under this black on both edges, this is what's under there. So I'm going to adhere these pleats together by just putting that little piece right there on the end and just give it a little tear, okay? And then I'm gonna just rub that with my bone folder. Get a bit of good, make sure it's adhered really well. And then we'll turn it around and we're gonna do it on the other end. Like that. So do it down here. Oop. Like that. All right, there we go. Now, once you've done that, now you all, all you have to do is choose the color that you want to accent your mask. So let's see on this one, there's some garden green and there's some night of navy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did have a strip of night of navy on here. Oh, here's a piece. All right, so you're gonna take your, whatever your accent color is, and on my paper trimmer, I have the first quarter of an inch is right here on the right side of the valley here in the middle, okay? So one little tick mark past that one quarter inch right there is right here and that's the perfect, perfect, perfect measurement to go across. Oh wait, I think I changed it. Oh, I did. I know I did. Let me let me make sure because I did change it. I was messing around with my design right up till the very end. Nope, that's right. Okay, making sure I did. It. So here's my quarter inch. One little tick mark right after that is what I want for the um, sides of the mask. Yeah, Maria, isn't this cool? And they they really do come together quickly. You could sit and make masks while you're watching TV. It's not difficult, I promise. All right, so now that I have these guys on here and I've pushed down so they're nice and um, stuck to the um, front of the mask, I'm gonna pull off the front of my tear and tape and I'm gonna take my little edge piece and I'm just gonna run it along that edge. And I just left mine long and then I just cut it, cut off what I'm not using. Even the golf one is cool, that's really cool. So that one, nice and adhered on there. So we'll peel this one off. Oop. There we go. And we're just going to do the same thing on this end. And like I said, with the download, there's some that are, you know, really more on the serious side. There's some that are just funny, some that are, you know, thank yous for first responders. It's just such a great download. And you know, once you purchase it, it's yours. You can do as many as you would like. All right, now, see how I look? So I folded that a little bit crooked there. It doesn't matter because we're, when we pull it out in just a few minutes, you'll see it's you're not gonna be able to tell. Okay, so I'm going to take my piece now, flip it over, and I'm going to add the tear and tape to the back side, just like we did to the front side. So this is actually what's going to um, not only adhere the little ear pieces to it, but it's also going to be part of what it adheres it to your project. Okay, there's that. All right, so now that I have that done, I'm going to pick out what color um, Baker's twine I want. Now I had just had some of this navy left over um, 
There was there's some in the Country Club suite if you're looking for some. That's in the store right now. It's a four pack. It comes with red, green, blue, and black, and it is really a great set. What am I doing here? All right, so my little pieces of Baker's twine. They need to be three inches. So you'll need two pieces at three inches. Gotta remember to change the snips out on my table. These are used and abused. Yeah, we need some new ones over here. Okay, now that I have my two little pieces of Baker's twine, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna peel out the back, like so. And I'm gonna adhere one end to the top, bring it around and adhere one end to the bottom. Whoop, like that. There we go. Okay, so that's one end. So now we'll go down here to the other end. We'll do the same thing. Now the next step is what really makes it, I think, um, in my opinion. Um, like I said, this is not my original design, but I could not stop making them. <laughs> so I thought I would share them with you. All right, so you can see I have the little ear pieces on there. Let me get that little fuzzy piece down a little more. Whoop. There we go. Okay, now what you're going to want to do to make it more, and this one's really pronounced, this one is not as high up, but to have it so that it's popped up like this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull these little pleats apart gently like that. Okay, and they kind of pop. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it over to the back and you're gonna take a piece of tear and tape. Actually, I don't want the whole roll here. Um, you're gonna take a piece of tear and tape and have them pulled apart as far as you'd like them. And I'm gonna start over here in the center and I'm gonna push my tear and tape down and I'm gonna adhere them so they stay open. Okay, you see that? My big fingers in the way. You got it? So they stay open. So see how that pops up? I wonder if I can make that. Uh, no. That would be a no. All right. So this one, you're not going to take the cover off of. You're just going to leave it on there so it's holding your mask so it's 3D. Okay? Good? So you can see, like I said, on this one, I really made it so that it was pretty high up. This one was a little flatter kind of see. Okay. And these actually with all of the, the, um, the sentiments on this download that you can print out, they all are really, they work great with the mask because, um, these are so small so you can fit them in, you know, on other pieces. So, all right. So there's our little face mask. Now, I need a piece of Knight of Navy that measures five and a half by eight and a half. And we're going to score this little puppy at four and a quarter. Like that. All right. And now I want a piece of Garden Green. Ooh, brand new pack. How exciting is that? piece of garden green. Actually, I'm going to do, yeah, garden green. So this one will be four by five and a quarter. And then I need a whisper white that's going to measure three and three fourths by five. And I'm gonna cut two of those because I want my inside to be smaller on this one. All right. <clears throat> All right, so, hey Ruthie, how are you? Good to see you. Hi Nancy, hi Carol. All right, these guys are gonna go together like so, okay? So let's go ahead and just glue those down because that's, that's a given. Here 
There we go. Fuzzy. And I thought this is really cool because, you know, whatever um, designer paper you use, you can make it feminine or masculine, whatever. I mean, even like my um, my cousin's daughter, Wiley Kate, plays golf on the golf team. So totally a good card for her, too. All right. So here we have this one. All right. Now I want to go in and I'm going to emboss this one. Let's pull in the, um, this is the hammered metal. It's one of my favorites of the new ones. And with the hammered metal, it's a new, one of the new designs. So you're gonna use the blue plate with it. So just remember, this is a blue plate um, embossing folder, the 3D. So just put that in there. It only gets the platform and the blue plate. And remember to always push your embossing folder in with the fold first, okay? Because that's gonna, when it goes under the roller, it's gonna squeeze it out this way and you wanna not have it against the seam so it pops your embossing folder, okay? You wanna do it with the seam first. There we go. All right, so look at this, love this. Even the back is really cool, but that front, ooh, stinking cute. All right, so there's that. Now, let's decide. I printed a bunch of the sentiments off of the download. Um, oh, I love this, sending love and paper hugs. That's really cool. Mm -mm. I'm smiling. I love this. Business on the top, PJs on the bottom. All right, Pia, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, sweetie. Um, oh, I forgot. I got to show you the card I did with this one. I wasn't going to show you because I wasn't sure I loved it, but you're, you're my friends. You're not going to judge me, are you? <laughs> I think I'll do that one because I like it. All right, so we have that one already cut, so I don't need this. Let's go ahead and adhere our hammered metal piece here. Now, on the embossed piece, I'm gonna put my adhesive down on the surface I'm gluing it to because sometimes when you're pushing on that embossed um, design, it'll um, mess up with your, mess your design up. So I don't wanna do that. So I'm just going to put my adhesive down first and then the top layer, okay? There's that, okay. Let's see. Go. All right, I need another piece of Knight of Navy. Just a three quarter inch strip. All I'm going to use. Don't let me go without showing you that other card, even though I didn't really want to show anybody. But I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's just sometimes, you know, you make one and you're like, I don't know. Here we go. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and trim this little banner. Go ahead and dovetail that. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Oop, that did not work. Sister, what happened there? There we go. Sometimes I do it better if I just do it this way. Not always good at doing it the way that's supposed to be easier. Who knew, right? Hi, Linda. Alrighty, so here we have our banner and our greeting and our little mask. Stinking cute. Love it. Okay, I'm going to put this guy down flat like so. All right, I'm going to pop this guy up. <laughs> Look, I actually cut the other side out. Thank you for your care. Oh, that's a good one, too. I don't know. Gosh, I did not need to know that was there. Hmm. Thank you for your care. Oh, yeah, I got to go with thank you for your care. Sorry. That was too perfect. I don't know why it was there, but 
I guess it was meant to be. Put this in the middle so I don't have any sa um, saggy middles. We don't do sa saggy middles here in the studio anyway. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you guys haven't checked out my YouTube channel, it's really cool. I'm really starting to get the hang of it. You should go check it out. It's really, really neat. And there's some good videos on there. This one will go on there tonight after I'm done. All right, thank you for your care. So now, with this one, like I said, that tear and tape is still on there. So that's pretty, um, pretty sticky. So I'm going to go on and put the, let's see, I don't have it at an angle. I'm just going to tack that down there on that little piece of tear and tape. And then I want to, because it's on top of this, it's going to be popped up but it's going to pop up twice because um, it's coming up above that. So I'm just going to put two dimensionals together like that, a little double duty, and put those under here, like so. And I'm going to put one over here, but my finger will not fit under there, so come on, be a pal. There we go. I'll just slide one right under there. There we go. Thank you for your care. How fun. All right, so there's that. Now let's do our inside. Where did I put my piece of white? <laughs> Here it is. All right, so I need a little strip of designer paper. Yeah, so this one's gonna be five inches by three quarters. So I finished Netflix. Love that. Um, thank you for your care. Um, life may look a little bit different, but we're all in this together. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I'm just going to take this one and trim that out. So just put it in my trimmer. And this is just printed on Whisper White cardstock. So you can print it on cardstock. You can print it on, um, you know, like I said, printer paper, whatever you would like that works for you. For the black and white ones, obviously, you could print those on colored cardstock and that would work. Love that. Oh, thanks, Deb. You're so sweet. All right, so there's that. Let's glue our little plaid down. Did I get it? I did. Glue our little plaid down over here. Like so. Ooh, I dropped it. Dag nab it. There we go. Right like that. Okay. Okay. Give it a little trim. Now I could put this down here, or I put it up here. I think I'll put it up here. Uh, yeah. Weird when I'm in here talking to myself. <laughs> there we go. Life may look a little bit different, but we are all in this together. All right. There's that. And you can dress it up as much as you would like. But I think this will be just perfect for now. There we go. Yay! All right, so there's our other one there. Oh, that doesn't go with you. It goes with this. Now, I'm going to show you something else, so don't go away. Um, 
So this is for the mask. And like I said, I'm going to post the um, measurements for this with the scoring directions and all that. Okay, so that'll be in the description. And then it'll be over on the YouTube channel. All right, so that's the mask. Now, I tried to put this card together, and I don't know if I like it. But I'm going to show you part of it. <laughs> or part of how to put part of it together. So this was the one I was working on earlier. And I kind of laid it aside because I wasn't quite sure. But I wanted to show you guys um, the daffodils. The daffodils are really fun. And the these two punches are going to be in the new catalog. All right. So here's what I used. I used... <clears throat> the perennial flower punch and the little flower punch that I can't tiny flower I don't know what it was this was from celebration but it's going to be in the new catalog woohoo okay so I punched out two of the perennial flowers and one of the um, little flowers and you can use this or you can use, um, oh, thanks guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, you can use this or you can use the smallest scallop circle. That just wasn't in my studio when I started to make it. This one was, so that's why. All right. So to get your little centers here to pop up, I took my, um, Take your pick tool and my stamp and pierce mat. If you don't have this, this is going away. You're going to want to get it before it's gone. It's like five bucks. This is worth its weight in gold. I do stamping on one side, piercing on the other. Um, it's really squishy, but it's great for your photopolymer stamp. So if you don't have this, don't, don't miss out. You're going to want to get it. Okay, so I'm going to take my take your pick tool with my flower there, and I'm just going to do it down kind of give it little circles down there to make that indentation like that okay yeah like that perfect okay then I will take my bone folder and oh you know what I'm gonna do this time I'll show you the difference because I didn't do it with the other one but I wanted to so let's do some um, shading. Grab my ink pad. There we go. So the cardstock I used was crushed curry. So I'm going to use a crushed curry ink pad with a little dauber. And this will make it much more three dimensional. You're just going to do the edges like that. I love daffodils and seeing all the different um, varieties. I think it's so cool. Like the white with the orange centers and every year, every year, Mike and I say in the spring, why didn't we plant bulbs? We should have planted bulbs. One year we're going to get coordinated and do it. All right, there's one. the other and like I said either of the little punches will do the smallest scallop circle which is going away um, or this tiny flower which is coming back in the new catalog if you haven't gotten a, I mean if you haven't gotten your name on the list for a catalog from me make sure to either comment here or um, send me a note so I know because I did mailing selector today and then I'm gonna have more that I'm gonna be mailing out Oops, I missed one. So make sure if you if you need a catalog, let me know. All right, so there's that. All right, so now I'm going to take my bone folder and gently, ever so gently, I'm going to curl the petals like that. Okay. And then we'll do this one. And I'm just doing them towards the center like daffodils do like that okay all right now i'm gonna put you can use a glue dot you can use whatever you want just gonna put a little adhesive down here like that and you'll offset them like that okay 
And then we will, I wonder what that would look like if I sponge this with crushed curry. I wonder if you could tell. Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. Happiness. So the center I have here is pumpkin pie. The outside is crushed curry. And I'm using crushed curry ink. Here, let me give this another smush this way. Kind of flattened it out when I was playing with it. There we go. All right, so now I am going to use a glue dot. I'm going to pick one up, put it here in the center. Yeah, I don't know why. I looked at the card and I'm like, I don't know. But I do love the saying. <laughs> I've just been working on my home body. <laughs> yep, that would be me. All right, so I'm going to put the center in there. Well, hopefully in the center, not off to the side so it looks wonky. And then I'm going to push here. Do a couple little circles like that. Pull these guys back up. And that is how I did my daffodils. So you got two for tonight. You got the mask and you got a daffodil. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right. So let me show you one more time the masks. Hi, Diane. Oh, hey, Lynn. Um, so here are my masks. If you, if you missed the beginning, this is... Um, what I did first, I showed you how to do the masks. And then I showed you how to do a little daffodil. And the download again with all of this, the sentiments is $12. And like I said, I'm not making anything on it. Stampin' Up's not making anything on it. All of the $12, every penny um, is donated for COVID-19. And you can choose which of the two um, organizations on there when you purchase it that you would like to donate to okay i love this just breathe but wear your mask how cool is that all right i hope you enjoyed it i hope that you have a wonderful evening i can't believe another week has like flown by um i'll be back again on sunday and um tonight at midnight is the last chance you have to register for bingo so if you haven't make sure you do it because um, we're closing it out tonight at midnight and we are going to have some serious fun. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, got a frog in my throat. Here's this month's host code. Today's the last day for this host code. So if you use this today, that's great. If not, tomorrow we'll have a different host code. So you'll want to make sure you get that. When you do use it, the host code, you get the free tutorial in the mail for the, the uh, bundle for the six projects. Um, my Inkervelles team, you guys get it for free in the file section. So I would love to send it out to some customers too. Oh, you're welcome, Diana. My pleasure. All right. That's all I have for you guys. Have a wonderful evening and I will see you again on Sunday evening. And until then, oh, I forgot. I almost forgot. At nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Stampin' Up's having a virtual party. So if you have not checked it out. It's, there's a link on this page. You can log in. They're giving away prizes. They're doing all kinds of fun things on there and people from corporate are going to be on there doing stuff too. So if you haven't checked it out, it, there's a link right, should be below this one, on the Suitably Stamp Facebook page. Okay? I hope to see you over there. Alright? Alright. God bless guys. Love you. I'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs>